Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Sebastian. It's Thursday, August 20th. Thanks for staying with us. A tropical storm alert is now in effect for the islands of the southeast Bahamas, including Inagua, Mayaguana, Crooked Island, Acklands, Ragged Island, Long Key, and Samana Key. Tropical depression number 13 continues to move west, northwestward, according to the Department of Meteorology. A tropical storm alert means that tropical storm conditions could be experienced within 60 hours. At about 2 p.m., the center of the tropical depression was located about 1,295 miles east-southeast of Grand Turk and the Turks and Caicos, or about 1,380 miles east-southeast of Inagua, or about 1,725 miles east-southeast of New Providence. The depression is moving toward the west-northwest near 21 miles per hour, and this is expected to continue for the next few days. On the forecast track, the depression is expected to move near or north of the North Leeward Islands by late Friday and in the vicinity of the Southeast Bahamas by early Sunday morning. Maximum sustained winds are near 35 miles per hour with higher gusts. Gradual strengthening is forecast and the depression is expected to become a tropical storm later tonight. COVID-19 cases in the country continuing to climb as health officials confirmed an additional 107 cases last evening. 59 of those cases here in the capital, 44 in the Grand Bahama, one in Exuma and three locations pending. Total confirmed cases for the country of the virus is at 1,531. 880 of those are in New Providence, 507 in Grand Bahama, 45 in Bimini, 14 in the Berry Islands, 8 in Cat Island, 6 in Exuma, 2 in Inagua, 4 in Eleuthera, and 1 confirmed case of COVID-19 in Andros. The location of 20 confirmed cases pending. There are 1,296 active cases with 61 cases hospitalized. So far, 8,320 tests have been completed. Meantime, health officials clarifying Tuesday's COVID-19 dashboard, which reported that 78 people were hospitalized. However, health officials say the number of persons that were actually hospitalized were at 47 for that day. The report of 78 hospitalized cases was a misclassification of people at the Sanderlands Rehabilitation Center. The ministry says the SRC isn't generally designated as an acute care hospital or facility, rather a long-term care facility. Contact tracing and further testing activities have identified additional cases at the SRC. And of the positive cases there, 20 people are having symptoms and are counted as clinical inpatients or hospitalized and are in isolation. Health officials also reporting two additional COVID-19 deaths, both males and residents of New Providence. They include a 46-year-old and a 65-year-old. There was also an additional non-COVID-19 related death. The current death toll now stands at 22 and non-COVID related deaths at four. Investigations are being conducted into the details of these unfortunate deaths. Democratic National Alliance Deputy Leader Bush Umbrister says the Bahamas is seconds away from disaster due to poor leadership and calls on the Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Minnis, to finally engage a team of qualified experts to form a new and improved competent authority. The key to surviving a national disaster, man-made or natural, is effective leadership. Sadly for Bahamians, We've seen our leaders, specifically the Prime Minister in his role as the competent authority, flounder, flip-flop, and generally fail to meet the country's needs from a health, social, and economic standpoint. As a result, we've seen the number of cases increase and witnessed the widespread of suffering caused by worsening economic conditions. If allowed to go unchecked, these series of missteps threaten to destroy life as we know it. Mr. Ambrister contends that the fact that Bahamians are willing to risk their lives to demand more of their government is a clear indicator of the levels of suffering and frustration we all feel. I, nor anyone in the Democratic National Alliance, labors under the delusion that there are easy fixes to the impact of the global pandemic. 
as an organization, we've witnessed firsthand the level of hopelessness in our country. As an organization, we have sought to help feed scores of families in vulnerable communities across the island of New Providence and across the country. But the reality is this is not a job for one person or one organization. What is required of our current leadership is a willingness to listen to the voices of the people. The DNA deputy leader noted that what Bahamians expect and deserve now more than ever is leadership that is passionate and empathetic, honest and committed to the task at hand. A nightly curfew is what's now in effect, taking the place of the seven-day complete shutdown that the Prime Minister had announced this past Monday. Based on the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Storm Preparedness Order 2020, the nightly curfew begins at 10 p.m. and ends at 5 a.m. Now business establishments that are not essential shall remain closed. However, laundromats may operate from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. This off the heels of Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minister relaxing strict and aggressive measures on the capital to mitigate a surge in COVID-19 cases. The Prime Minister set to address the nation later in the week to give further details on the lockdown in New Providence. The Prime Minister's announcement of an abrupt seven-day lockdown sparked public outrage on Monday with scores of peeved Bahamians hitting the streets in protest. 39 people were arrested from the protest and are expected to stand before the courts soon. A team of lawyers have joined forces to assist those protesters. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.